There are things that you've got to be aware of. If you are a being of light on planet Earth right now, there are things that are going to happen that you need to know. We're in an era called pre ascension and pre ascension has light and dark behaving very very differently the conditioning says there's nothing to see here the conditioning says life is carrying on as normal there's no big transformative spiritual awakening happening this is not the shift of the ages don't be ridiculous go pay your bills go pay your mortgage go worry about what's on social media you know, all the distraction. Because imagine if we walked around knowing the truth, which is this is a lifetime of ascension. That means my 3D consciousness and physical expression, both, are in the process, it's an alchemical process, of transfiguration. Transforming from this 3D version into the lighter version, into the 5D version of who you are. You're already multidimensional. You're not becoming 5D. Don't think of ascension that way. Think of ascension rather as the melding, melting, merging of the 3D self into its higher self, which is the fifth dimensional consciousness. That's an important point because it's going to affect your understanding of what I talk about next, light and dark. I've spoken in many videos about light and dark, but I'm going to share with you information today that I haven't shared with you before and an explanation that I know I haven't given you guys before. But at the end, I'm going to share with you how you can navigate through the territory that we're in, wherein you're going to be antagonizing darkness. You're going to be just being you and scratching your head and wondering why in your presence some people just turn. And they could be really good people. They could be really nice people. But what is it about you that these people just almost seem to lash out at you? And they seem to be very unconscious, very unaware of their own behavior. The thing is, light, which is your ability to embody light, it's not just your ability to be light in consciousness. It is how much of that consciousness you can bring in at the physical level. When you do that, that light takes up more space and the ripple becomes amplified. And that amplified ripple begins to make darkness feel that it's got no room to be. It begins to make darkness feel that it's shriveling and shrinking and dying. And so it lashes out. But that's not the only reason. It's not just a grab for space, a, a desire for real estate, so to speak. There's something much bigger going on. And that is dark and light. Let me describe to you how they once behaved and I'm going to contrast it against how they're beginning to behave and how they will behave post ascension. So we were born to the false matrix where dark and light were totally separate. So imagine two dancers on a dance floor, ignoring each other, even allergic to each other. I don't want to go near you. I'm not going near you either. That was the conversation of these two dancers. I'm just going to ignore you. You're not real. You don't exist because you're going to take me off my game. You see, darkness, if it's in the presence of light and allows light to just love it, allows light to just see it, if darkness is in the presence of light, it is going to become light. So quite correctly, darkness knows that in order to maintain itself as something separate, it must reject push away and avoid light at all costs. So for darkness, the modus operandi is something along the lines of separation equals preservation. For light though, you might say, but light would surely not do the same thing. What was light doing? Why was that other dancer on the dance floor, one being dark, one being light, why was light then circling the dance floor but not going near the darkness? Because in the false matrix, the mistaken impression was Light needed to maintain itself as pure and that it was going to be tainted or somehow diminished by darkness. For that reason, we didn't even go near our own emotions when they were dark. We didn't even go near our own fears or our own inadequacies or the unanswered questions that we couldn't delve into because what if we delved too deep and landed up in a dark place? So light lived in fear of darkness. But all of this took place very silently. 
See, so much of this was interwoven into subconscious programming of the false matrix, and we all came out with the same impressions. Light needs to stay in its corner, and dark needs to stay in its corner, and the two cannot tango together because something bad's going to happen. Maybe spontaneous combustion, maybe the end of the world, maybe dark will become the primary force of the world because the impression that light held was that dark had that power and that was never ever the truth so that is the separation that we were born to of light and dark and you can see how very skewed the perceptions were that they had of each other we're now somewhere in between where we're going to when we are in a fifth dimensional version of ourselves and a fifth dimensional reality, where we're going to is a world where dark and light are not separate because they're not meant to be. In the same way that you exist multidimensionally, so does darkness, so does light. But at higher dimensions, you stop calling it dark because it stops behaving as dark. It stops being separate. It starts being one unified field of consciousness, which you would look at and see as light and call light. But it's a unified light. The other word for that unified light is true light or just plain truth, truth itself. That's where we're going into unity consciousness, where we've been is division consciousness. So it's been one, you've got to choose a team, dark or light. You can't be both. That's kind of where we were. Remember I said that we're somewhere in the middle right now. And in the middle, there's a lot of confusion, isn't there? Because you're neither one nor the other. It's kind of like being a teenager. You're not a kid. You're not an adult. You're in this very awkward stage. Well, humanity is in that very awkward stage with dark and light right now. The behavior of darkness is that it's going to lash out in self-preservation. The modus operandi of light in the presence of darkness. Remember that I'm talking about the light that we were born to, which was that false matrix version of light, which was still scared of darkness. That version of light is just going to dismiss, deny, resist, ignore the darkness. But as that light becomes more whole, which is an organic process and is brought about by us receiving more of an influx from the cosmic field around us. The more we experience this influx from the cosmic field around us, the more true light we begin to embody, which means your kindness becomes kinder and your love becomes deeper and your compassion becomes exponentially greater as you receive more of this cosmic truth. It's almost an automatic process. There's a dissolving of inner darkness and that inner density or the inner darkness, which is very often just misunderstandings, all of that gets transmuted into more and more light. Darkness can exist at the level of physicality and the level of energy, just like light does. Light can be an angelic being, it can be healing and it can be you in your physical body. But as you take in more and more light, you will begin to antagonize darkness. And it's always going to be a last ditch attempt of darkness to try to attack you. So what do you do then when that happens? Be more light is the answer. Be more light. Because remember that darkness is going to go into avoidance. Darkness is going to go into denial. Darkness is going to go into negotiations and it's going to go into some kind of intellectual, almost fantastical, overly analyzed version of what it needs to do, whereas light is just going to be light. And that's what you're going to be called upon to do right now. There's something important that you've got to know here, though, and that is when I say to you, just be more light and let that light be felt within you. So it's not a visual and it's not a thought, you know, I'm light, I'm light, I'm light. It's certainly not that. When I say to you, be more light, I'm saying invite more light in and understand there's a consequence to that. The consequence of you being more light is that your own inner denials, your own inner darkness, the stuff you haven't yet faced is going to be displaced. Therefore, as you let more light in, you may very well experience more discomfort. You may very well feel, oh no, Kerry told me to let more light in, but now I'm crying more, or now I'm feeling more, or now I'm perhaps 
more anxious or more something that I don't want to be? Do you see? As you let light in at the inner level, there is this adjustment of frequency, which is utterly, utterly necessary. I often talk about entities. I often do entity clearings in my online community. And entities are nothing more than unclaimed, unresolved darkness. In other words, darkness that is still maintaining separation and therefore preservation. So we begin from the inside being light by transforming that which is our own pain, that which is our own trauma into a higher version of itself. That is why the false matrix outside of you is beginning to glitch. That's why it's beginning to erode. That's why it is crumbling already and desperately trying to stand on very wobbly legs because this level of work is taking place from within. And the kinder you get and the more loving and the more compassionate and the more light you become, the more that darkness around you, external to you, sees you're the problem, you're the cause, and it kind of wants to stop you. But I cannot stress this loudly enough. You are safe, you are safe, you are safe. Stop being in the in-between place. Remember what I spoke about? Light and dark in total separation, light and dark in unification, and you somewhere in between, don't be in the in-between. Go into that unification now. Which means take your spiritual journey much deeper than you've ever taken it before. Take your meditations more seriously than you've ever taken them before. Take being in presence as a job that you're here to master. And whatever you do to earn money and earn a living is secondary to your true purpose. And your true purpose will always be holding more light within you, being more light. And when that happens, eventually darkness stops antagonizing you because it realizes I can't come too close because that light that that person's holding is so damn big. So don't go in shielding, don't go in protecting because that's employing the methods of darkness. The methods of darkness are push away, push away, push away, resist, avoid, deny. The methods of light are alchemize, accept, allow, be the light, trust the light, and know that that light does the job for you. It becomes a shield for you, and it's a magnificently ginormous field of consciousness that you can't even see the end of. So when darkness comes for you, what's it going to meet? It's going to meet that light that's out there at the end and know that light is not hurt or tainted by darkness. It never can be. Do you understand the importance and the value of being more light? And then when you learn to just relax into that, to surrender into the light that you are, you add to it, it becomes bigger, you become more of a ripple, you become an example to others. And this is what you're being called upon to do at the moment. So when people start behaving towards you in a way that they don't necessarily behave to others, when you start seeing the worst in people, it can be because your light is that bright. Your love is that sweet and pure and unconditional. Your kindness is that innocent. Your light is that big that it is antagonizing darkness. And there's a lot of people with a lot of unconscious darkness. So rather than letting somebody else come in and antagonize your unconscious darkness, bring in light, preempt it. Bring in light right now. The information that I give you here on social media is just that. It's information. It's free. It's from my heart right into yours because I know humanity needs it. There will be those people that want to take this information into a level of mastery and application of the information that I share with you at the practical level. Yes, I teach that. That is what the Plasma Light Tribe is for. That's my online community and you are so welcome to join. If, of course, you're not called to join, just enjoy these videos sent to you from my heart all the way into yours. Watch this video next. It's called Your Body is a Technology That You Do Not Own. Lots of love, everyone. Bye-bye for now.